YouTube, Tube Nation, it's Mad Dog coming at you one more time. Today, a um, couple of things, you know, a couple of things were on my mind. I want to um, pretty much talk to the new driver about, or the person who's out there thinking about uh, getting into trucking, or even, or even the people who are already out here doing it. Um, that you know might need some uh, some help, some uh, you know a little insight. It's about nine different topics I want to kind of share with you or just touch on real quick on each one. And um, those topics include, <laughs> you know what we got to do. Don't play. We'll be back. Okay, you two, I uh, appreciate you sticking with me, coming back and um, checking things out. So this is really, I guess, going to be for, um, it could be for anybody. I mean, you know, take it for what it's worth. If it, if it can help you, then good. If not, then, uh, you know, just keep it moving, you know, whatever. But just make sure you come back if you do keep it moving. But what, a um, couple of things I want to go over today is, one is about trip planning, all right? Another one is about tolls. Another one is about uh, the mountains in the U.S. Uh, I also want to touch on the pre-trip inspection, which um, you know, if you first first coming into this or just getting into it, you know that pre-trip is important. But uh, I also want to talk to you about the inspection itself uh, after you get your CDL and you know once you hit the road. Um, also about hours for the solo driver, the miles that uh, that you'll run, uh, you know the time and all that. I want to talk to you if you're considering driving as a team where you know two people drive the truck. I don't mean you have your CDL and you're driving and then somebody else is just riding along as a passenger. I'm talking about team driving. So I want to you know, touch on that for a minute. Also, um, about the, the the emergency devices, you know, where, where to put them. I mean, the book tells you where to put them, but you know, when you have an accident or something's going on out there real time, uh, it's easy to forget. So you know, I just want to kind of touch on a few things about that. I want to talk to you about payroll, payroll cutoff, and the paperwork for the payroll, all right? And then most important, I'm gonna talk to you about safety. All right, so what I did was I um, paper clipped a couple of points. Well, let me let me start with this. This is uh, called the Professional Driver Training, the Professional Driver Training Driver's Manual. It says 2018, but um, a few things have changed since then, but not much, not enough to really be significant enough to uh, print out a whole new book. I mean, just some real small things, and most most of those are just internals, not DLT related, anything like that. But when you come to Stevens, they give you one of these, and this book is really helpful because in it, it's got everything. I mean, it's got forms, it's got, you know, things about the Qualcomm, it's got um, uh, about fueling, about sliding your tandems, you name it, it's in this book. All right, but what I want to go over first is touch a little bit about. Uh, let me see. I'm, I'm not sure what I want to go over first. I did mark it, so let's let me see what exactly I marked. Okay, so this is about the tolls. Let me um, I did a little illustration for you, and don't judge me, okay? Because I'm not an artist. All right, I drive. That's what I do. I'm not an artist. But let me see what the best place to put this. So. All right, I think that makes sense. Okay, so what this is, when you when you go into different states, um, you'll come across the toll, the Easy Pass, or the Peach Pass, or the Georgia Pass, or the Sun Pass, um, which allows a truck to you know to go through without having to stop to pay the toll. The company pays for it. They have transponders that they put inside the truck, and actually, uh, let me see here. This is one right here that's on this thing right here that's called a transponder and we put that on the truck so that we don't have to pay when we're going uh, going through the tolls all right so what I did was this right here this dark line that's the wall all right that wall divides traffic from uh, it, it divides the, the traffic coming in this direction from the traffic that's going in this direction all right so just kind of bear with me and you'll, you'll understand what all this means all right so these are the, the directions for the traffic of course got little you know the little lines these little traffic lines but as you come up on these toll road these toll booths you'll see signs all right 
there'll be signs above and uh, one of them in particular says speed limit 15 miles per hour or 10 miles per hour wh you know whatever it is what's important to remember about this is that some of these places are really not planned they really do enforce the speed limit so you fly through here doing 20 25 and then you want to slow down at the last minute well you better believe there's gonna be a cop on the other side of that toll waiting for you all right I've seen it time and time again especially in uh, the Chicago area or yeah in the, in the Chicago area and um, some places in the north in the northeast so be mindful of that sign if it's 15 miles per hour do 10 be on the safe side if it's 10 well do 10 maybe 7 8 whatever but don't don't go through the flying that's the point all right so those signs also say for each you know for this lane it'll say you might say pre-pass depending on where you are or easy pass express uh drive through something like that all right here's another wall this wall right here divides the lanes that have to stop and actually go in inside the the you know the lane to pay the toll it divides this wall divides this traffic and get it in focus for you it divides this traffic from this traffic all right now some of these signs are going to say cash only you've seen them before if you only have cash you go through here you pay with cash you might have a lane that says cash or trucks anybody i mean cars or trucks anybody can go through there easy pass or you know these two lanes might be easy pass where you can go through these lanes you know if your car or truck whatever that's fine but the, the whole purpose of me making this illustration is to show you especially the rookies that if you come across this when you come up on the toll if you have those that transponder in the window you don't have to get in this lane that says easy pass and you know go slow through this lane you can actually go straight through just like you on on the regular highway just keep going through and what happens is there's a camera above you right here and there are also sensors and cameras in the wall or along the side of the wall and as your truck passes through this lane the cameras and the sensors take a picture and they know if you have a transponder or easy pass or pre-pass or whatever and um, you, ne you won't necessarily if you go through this lane you won't necessarily get a green light or a red light but um, if you're going through that lane and you don't have the transponder you better believe your company is going to get a, um, a notice about it fine ticket you know whatever and you will you will be contacted all right they're gonna bring it to your attention they know who ha who had the truck on which day and what the number was and all that they take pictures of all this stuff so be mindful of it that's really the only purpose of this as a rookie uh when i was in you know anyway <laughs> i'm not gonna get all into that but when you're new and you don't know about it you might see this sign that says easy pass all right and you might say well I have easy pass that's easy pass so I'm gonna get in line with the other cars and I'm gonna slow down like everybody else is doing I'm gonna get up here to the front and I'm gonna just go through slow let it register and pass through not knowing that you can actually just come through these lanes and keep going you don't have to stop all right so that's what this illustration right here is about all right and oh because this is actually artistic I gotta sign it. You know how they sign the initial at the bottom of the painting or the picture? Yeah, that right there. It's authentic now. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Let me see what else I got. I got all the stuff paper clipped for you. Just uh, some things I want to talk to you about that I thought might be helpful. All right, so not every company has this, but you can, I'm sure they, they can get it for you if you ask them. Um, at Stevens, they automatically give you this. And what this is, is um, it's, it's a mountain map. It's a mount. It's a map of the United States. It's got all the, you know, the regular interstates and everything that you need when you're traveling. But these numbers are some of the most dangerous mountains in the country, and they're all labeled. So what's important about this is, if you're going, if you're traveling in this area, let's say West, West Virginia area, or uh, let's say um, well Eagle Mount or Mount. What is, what is it called? I forgot what it's called. Mount Pass or Eagle Mount, something like that. In Tennessee, it's not that bad, but it's a mountain. These over here are pretty bad. A lot of these are, are pretty rough. But if you're traveling in this in this direction or in this area, uh, and you want to avoid some of this, or if even if you can't avoid it, at least you'll know what's in the area, what's ahead of you. All right, which all goes to a part of the trip planning that I want to talk to you about in in a little bit. But this is important because you, you won't always be able to avoid these mountains depending on where you're going just because they're mountains and there are no roads that you know there 
aren't always roads that go around it or cut through that a truck can go. So what's important about this is that you are aware that there are mountains or um, uh, you know really steep grades in these areas and be prepared. All right, if you got a heavy load like uh, like meat, meat is really heavy and uh, a lot of water or liquid. It doesn't matter. I mean, weight is weight, but you just want to be careful and be safe. Take the take the curves at a comfortable level. It doesn't matter if everybody around you is doing 75 or 80. No, nobody should be doing that fast going down a mountain. But if they are, look, you driving the truck, you're in control of the truck. All right, slow down. Go go at a safe speed for you. Because either they're going to get there at the same time or just about the same time that you will or they're not going to make it at all. All right. Bottom line. Safety is always first out here. I don't, I don't care what you do. I don't care who you are. I don't care how many years of experience you have. Safety is always number one. And speaking of safety, the thing about being a professional truck driver is, you know, if you have an accident nine out of ten times, the truck driver is going to be fault or going to be cited for. It's going to be his fault, even if it wasn't his fault. And part of the reason is because we're held at a higher standard than the regular motorists. You know, the regular person driving a car or a motorcycle. We're, we're considered professional drivers. But not only that, but the 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 fines and the fees and uh, the uh, you know just everything that you go through if you have an accident or if you're looking at um, unfortunately a fatality in that accident is a lot greater for you in a bad way than it is for anybody else. So according to DOT, and it's in the book, our job as prof professional truck drivers is really to protect the motoring public. Can you believe that? Listen to that. Protect the motoring public. That means if we can avoid an accident or if we can, if they're doing something stupid or, or whatever, it's our responsibility, it's our obligation to maybe, if they cut in front of us, it's you know it's our obligation to drop back, give them speed. I mean, give them space. Uh, don't tailgate them. Give them space. Here's another known fact. Uh, may not be all that popular, but um, the statistics, statistics show if a truck is going 75, 80 miles an hour or uh, or close to that, and it hits a car that's just sitting still. The person that's in that car is gonna die. Nine out of ten times they will die. Not all the time, depending on you know, I, I guess the grace of God and what happens, but usually they're gonna die because that truck is gonna cut through that car like a you know like like a knife, a hot knife on butter. So you know you, you gotta think about it. And if a truck going that fast hits another truck that's standing still, that truck driver is gonna die. He can't he can't withstand or sustain that uh, that impact so there are a lot of things to think about and if you are somebody who drives a car know somebody who drives a car that doesn't respect the trucks well let me tell you this let me tell you something about you when you get your CDL or even when uh, you learn or, or practicing to get your permit you're gonna have a lot more respect for the truck than you probably already do if, you know then you know probably than what you already had and here's why there are a lot of things that go on in the road that you take for granted or that other people might like cutting in front of a truck trying to you know get over real quick not realizing that the truck can't stop on a dime and if he can't stop and you can't get out of out of his path you die all right i mean it's, it's point blank it, it's it's you know and i i, I probably shouldn't say you, you die like it's a definite but um it's, it's gonna be bad it's gonna be bad another thing if you're driving a truck and you got to be careful. This is where our responsibility comes in as a driver to protect the motor in public. If you're driving a truck and a car cuts in front of you, it's stupid on his part to cut in front of you, number one. But if your truck makes contact with that car on the corner of the car, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen this in videos and I've seen it on TV, but um, it's going to be a... Um, all right, sorry about that. I had a little mishap. It's going to be a pit maneuver. It's the same thing. You've probably seen it before when, uh, uh, let's say you're watching live PD or cops or some cop show, and they're in a police chase, and the, the cops hit the back of the, the car, and they spin them around. Well, that's the same exact thing that happens when a car cuts in front of a truck, and the truck's bumper makes contact with the corner of that car. It's going to be the same thing. The only difference is the truck is a lot bigger, it's a lot heavier, and that that truck is going to either push that car in a direction that nobody was expecting or it's going to cause that car to tumble and roll all right depending on how fast and what the angle of, of the of the impact is so 
there's a lot of responsibility out here. So when I say be safe, I'm not just saying be safe because it's, it's something good or something nice to say. I, I, I come from a management background in transportation. So I've worked in transportation for a long time. And one of the, the things that I would always tell my guys and girls is be safe out there. And I'm serious about it because I, I know what goes on out there. I know how bad it can be. Be safe. Even at the end of my videos, I, when I say it's okay to make a beeline for the state line, but be safe, be smart about it, I'm serious. Be safe, all right? There's too much going on out there. So, all right, so back to this for a second. So these, these numbers correspond with the next page with these. All right, number one on the map is gonna be Union Pass, Highway 68 West. That's the mound. All these are different mounds in different states. All right, but you won't have this unless you um, unless your company has it or unless you come to Stevens. This book, by the way, they give you out of um, it's it's a free manual. They give it to you, and it's not like any other manual that you've seen. The stuff in here is really really helpful. It's not like a driver's manual that you know most companies give you, and it's just uh, a bunch of nonsense. I mean, there's 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 something here for for everything. All right, so the next thing is the pre-trip. All right, I'm not gonna go through all this, but what I want to touch what what I want to touch on about the pre-trip inspection is, and I'll tell you what, I'll I'll just let you look at this while I'm talking. The pre-trip, the pre-trip inspection is something that's required in order to get your CDL. All right, but it doesn't stop there. After you get your CDL or your permit or whatever you're getting, you're on the road um, on your own. It's still going to be important to do a pre-trip. It doesn't matter if you're a company driver or if you're a lease driver or if you're an owner operator. It's important that you use what you learn in the pre-trip and actually go over the truck, actually look for things. Don't just, you know, do your pre-trip on the computer and then say, oh, okay, I did it. I mean, it happens sometimes, but at some point you got to get out and check things on the truck because you don't know. You just don't know what's going on out there. So in saying that, I want to bring this to your attention. Not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, um, I got out of the truck and walked around. I was with a, this is about... I guess about a month ago, I was with the trainer. I got out of the truck and I just did a regular walk around, nothing serious, just you know checking things out, making sure everything is good. And I walked around, I'm hitting the tires, kicking the tires, and I came across one tire that looked it looked fine, but when I kicked it, it wobbled. All right, it was flat. And I'm I'm bringing all this up to say this: when you're in a car and you have a flat tire, where the car just the tire goes flat. I mean, that's what it does. It goes flat. And you can see that it's flat. But when you're in a truck and you have a flat tire, the tire still stands up. Unless it's all torn up and chewed up like you've seen on the side of the road when you go going places. If you have a flat tire on the truck, it's going to still be standing and it's going to look like it's perfectly fine, like nothing is wrong with it. That's why you can't walk around a truck when you're doing an inspection and just look at the tires. You got to push them, you got to kick them, you got to hit them, thump them, you got to do something so that you can tell, hey, there's no air in this tire. Had I not caught that, we would have, we would have been pulled over either on the side of the road someplace uh, because the tire would have shredded up, or we would have had to pull over someplace and have more down downtime um, that wasn't expected. And what would have been bad about that is, at the time that I caught it, we were still on a break, so we had time to, you know for somebody to come and and get it fixed. But if we were on the road, let's say our break was up, and we're we're rolling now, we're on the road, and now that we're on the road. Um, the tire goes flat. Well, if the tire goes flat, now you gotta pull over and you gotta call and wait for somebody to come fix it. If somebody comes, it's gonna be a couple hours sometimes. It's not always like they're right around the corner. Sometimes they come, and depending on where you are, it could be a long time. You could be in the middle of, of nowhere, nowhere land. And I'm always in nowhere land, you know, running these loads. But you could be in the middle of no place and somebody's gotta be dispatched to you. It's gonna take a couple of hours, so you better post up, make sure you have water and food. All right, you never know. So my whole point about all this is, again, be safe, do your pre-trip. The purpose of the pre-trip is for you to identify anything that could possibly be wrong with the vehicle or with, you know, with the truck before it actually happens. That's what this is all about. All right, so there was um, this page right here. This page right here is uh, is titled Placement of Warning Triangles, all right? I'm not gonna say triangles, I'm gonna say devices because you can also have flares, you can also have uh, the, you know, the triangles or um, uh, think, I believe that's the only thing you can have as far as a, a warning device to, to lay out. But what I wanna say about this to the new guys, even to the experienced guys, you know, whenever you, 
when you study your CDL or study the manual to, from the driver's license place to get your uh, your permit or your CDL, they gave you a book with a section in it. It was either a section in that book, in that little, you know, that, that thin book for CDL or it was a totally separate book only dedicated to your CDL. In it was something similar to this, all right? And basically what this is, it tells you for every every possible scenario that could be uh, out there on the road that you might encounter, how to lay your triangles or your flares up. So if you're on a four lane divided highway where traffic is going this way, and on this side traffic is going this way, and you break down here, it tells you where and how to put your triangles out, all right? Follow this, you know, it's simple. All you do is from the back of the trailer, count, walk 10 feet. All right, oh, well, what you feel is about 10 feet. Then do it again, 400 feet. Do it another one for 200 feet. All right, this is important because the, the traffic that's come from this way need to know well in advance that, something, that something's wrong, all right? If they don't know, if you don't have your, your, if you have these triangles spaced too close together and not far enough apart, you don't give the traffic that's coming this way enough time to react. And reacting means they might have to slow down, they might have to even stop and wait for other traffic to pass so they can go in this lane and go around you. Or it could mean if you don't put them you know, in enough distance, you could be somewhere walking around the truck and they don't see you because it's at night and you don't have a vest on, you're wearing dark clothes, or maybe they see you but they don't see you in time. And they, they try to slam on brakes, they're gonna slide. And guess what's gonna happen, all right? So this is all part of being smart about it. If you're in this kind of a situation, this is how and where you space your triangles, all right? When you break, I don't want to say when because it just, you know, it sounds like it's going to happen, but it, it could. It's very possible. Remember this. If you break down, the law requires you to put these triangles out or these flares out within 10 minutes of being stopped on the side of the road, all right? Now, nobody's on the side of the road counting, but it's a good idea to follow that rule because whether they're looking or not, within, if you wait 15, 20 minutes where you just, you know, you could have caused an accident that could have been avoided had somebody seen it 10 or 15 minutes ago, all right? So here's another situation. If you park on a curb right here, you broke down right here, and this is the curb, this is how you have to do it. And this is exactly how, I was on a road once, for a lot of you that don't know, uh, I drove a long time ago, all right? That's the secret. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let it out of the bag. I drove a long time ago and I got out of trucking, and when I wanted to get back in it, it was so much time that it passed that I had to start all over and get my license again. All right, and that's where I am now. So I'm not new to this. I've done this a long time. I've driven trucks before. I've managed uh, um, logistics departments, transportation departments. I just, I like the road. But back to business. I broke, I came out of a tunnel in Idaho. And when I came out of the tunnel, I came around this curve just like this and I broke down exactly right here in this spot. You have to put your triangles and your devices exactly like the way they say. And it's a reason for them to you know why they put it that way. All right. Don't question it. Don't try to figure it out. Just understand this is how it needs to be done. All right. Here's another one. If you're on a hill, this is how it should be done. If you're this way on a two lane straight road, it should be like that. But back to what I was saying about the, the CDL book or the manual. You're not always going to have this, but this is always going to be in that manual. So when you study, get your license, or even if you've already got your license and you left and, you know, you not left, but you got your CDL and you threw the book away, it's a good idea to go back and get that book and tear this page out and just put it somewhere in the truck, keep it with you. Because God forbid something happens in one of these situations and you don't know how to put your, your triangles. Well, here's what's going to happen. What could happen a lot of times. If you don't have them spaced the right way, if DOT is on the scene, you're going to get cited for improper placement of your, of your triangles or your devices. All right. You don't want that. All right. You don't want that. If the cop comes, he may say something about it. He may not say something. But whether anybody says something or not, this is to protect you. You're the one that's out there. And another thing that you might not realize, anytime that you, you, you're getting out of your truck to put these down, always get out of your truck with the triangles up against your stomach or your chest as you walk to the back. You want every visible means to be available for the driver who's coming towards you to see you. So have, have it placed at your, at your chest as you walk by, drop one down. Have the other two still at your chest as you walk forward, drop one down. Have another one, drop one down. Now after you drop that last one down, you're not going to have any more walking back. That's why it's important to keep this in the truck at all times. All times. You never know we're going to need that, all right? So even if you drop your triangles down, you can still be seen with, with a reflective safety jacket. 
Uh, a lot of companies give them out free. If they don't, you can always get one. Don't put that don't put that to the side. Don't look at that as, oh, I get one later on. I don't have money or I can't afford to get one. Let me tell you something. You can't afford not to have one, okay? It's just like insurance. I can't afford it right now. I get it later. Well, what happens when you need it? You don't have it, all right? It's not like your alarm system at home. It's not that, you, you know, you don't want to get it. I know you probably, you know, want to get it. Things might come up, but you got to remember the whole point in this every day for me is to go home, all right? Now, even though I'm on the road, I don't go home every night. But at some point, I do want to go home, okay? And I want to, I want to be alive to be able to go home. That's the only way I can go home. Now, this one is about your, I call this one the load assignment. All right. This is a pretty good generic form to use. No matter who you are, what company you drive for, a lot of companies will give these out to you or they have stores where you can buy them at, at their company store. Uh, you can also just write it out by hand and make copies. This is good to have, all right? I'm going to go over it with you. Every load that you do, you want to write it down and you want to document it. You never know when dispatch is going to come back and say, hey, what was the trailer number on that load that you did in January? Or what's what's the seal number for that one you did in March? All right, where did you go? You you just need to know it. You need to track it. And it's easy. The transfer load date is going to be the day that you scan your, your paperwork. When you get all your documents filled out, you scan it so you get paid. That's the date. What I would do is put the, uh, the date that you scanned it and the time, but I'd also... Or write the confirmation number on there. If you use a scanner in the truck stop, or if you use one in the, uh, you know, on your phone or your mobile app, it'll give you a confirmation number. Put that confirmation number somewhere in this area. That way, you can always go back to it. They can always re, uh, re, um, research it. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You put your trip number, your load number, how much you paid, or whatever. Uh, just fill out the boxes. Empty Hub is the mileage that you start. I'm not going to go over every single thing in here, but um, that's what your mileage was. When you empty, when you start, you put it down there, the totals and all that. But what is important is this information right here. You need that the shipper's information. And a good one good reason to have all this done before you start your trip is because when you're driving, you don't have time to go to the Qualcomm to look at, uh, you know, to start scrolling and, and finding the, um, it's like going through email trying to find what you need. What's the company's name, you know, the phone number and all that. Have all this in one place. That way you can just reach over to the seat you can pick it up and say, okay, my shipper's, uh, my shipper's name is ABC Company. Uh, their phone number is this. The pickup number is that. And that's another thing. We get to the window of the, the shipper or the receiver and ask you for the pickup number. If you're fumbling through your phone because you didn't write it down or you have to run back to the Qualcomm, you're wasting time. Your clock, your DLT clock doesn't stop for you. So no matter how little how much you do, that clock is always running. Just like the time that this video is recording. It, it's it's going to run. All right, so be prepared and have all your stuff together. All right, and this is just uh, pick up drop off is, you know, if you're going to pick up some place uh, on the way to the destination or if you're going to drop something off. Uh, fuel op stops. At Stevens, they give you suggested route, suggested places to fuel up, and uh, you can just kind of record that information down there for a future reference. Okay, so this sheet is a trip plan. Um, a lot of people do this in the beginning, but they don't follow through. They don't keep doing it because it's so it's so much quick and easy just to run with it, you know, just to get the load and, and and head out, which is you know which is okay. But it really it really does kind of help. I didn't even like it really in the beginning, but it kind of helps you uh, when you're along the way because you can kind of use it as a guide. You don't have to do this, but it just kind of helps you know where you're going and when you're going to make your stops. It too is uh, self-explanatory. Put the date, the trailer number. Uh, you know, second the date, trailer number, trip number, where you um, where you picked it up from, where you going to. If it's a reefer load, and a reefer, for those of you that don't know, uh, it's not weed. I know back in the day they call it reefer. Uh, it's not that. A reefer is a unit. It's a trailer that has a refrigerated uh, unit on the front of it that keeps that regulates the temperature inside. It's usually for produce or for food, uh, meats, that type of thing. So you've probably seen those trailers on the road with big box matter of fact let me uh let me get out and see if i can show you right quick this is this is the reefer unit get out this is called this right here is this is the reefer that's the temperature right there that whole thing is the reefer unit it sits on on the, the front of the trailer and it regulates it and what we're doing is putting the, the temperature right here is already set for 
this right here is, is what the temperature is inside the trailer and this is what uh what we're trying to get it to i mean i'm sorry this is what it is inside that's what it should be set to and we just control it right here all right those are my airlines red blue and green okay so so what we got is let me get back in here so so that that's what a briefer unit is, all right? So whatever the temperature is, that's what you wanna have set um, based on the bill of lading, and you put that information there. And basically, you're just writing on this sheet uh, the date, If, you, for example, you write today's date, arriving at um, TA and the time, and you just kinda of do that all along the way, all down the sheet, depending on where you're going, and it kinda of helps you with your stops. Nothing big. Nothing fancy, just that. Okay, so the um, I'll give you something to look at while we're doing that. Oops. All right. So, all right. So the other thing I want to talk to you about was um, I was uh, actually. Let me see. There was one page I really want to show you. If you're a solo driver, hang on a second. All right, this page right here. So what this is, this is for solo drivers. So it basically tells you at the top, M, I mean miles, D, R, and total. What this is is uh, the miles. These are the miles. That's the D is how long it'll take you to drive those miles and what uh, the R is how many rest stops you have to take so let's say and I did um, I wrote this up here that, that little guide D for drive R for rest hours and I made myself a little example not knowing that all the way at the bottom it's already on there all right pay attention folks reading is fundamental okay so let's say we want to take a trip that was let's pick one uh, stop 1350 all right so we picked the trip or we got a load that was 13 1350 miles to 1361 miles it would take us see that 27 actually we put my finger on it so we can mark it 13 13 1350 1350 all right so it would take us i mean if we're going 13 1350 on the miles it's going to take us 27 hours to drive that and we're going to have to take two 20 hour uh, two 10 hour breaks that's what the 20 is for you got to take a 10 hour break drive it 10 11 hours take a 10 hour break do it again take a 10 hour break so the total time that it would take you to get there is going to be 47 hours all right that's what it's for uh if you had, if you were going 20 let's say 2370 uh 23 let's say 2370 this is it it's going to take you 47 hours and uh 15 minutes that took 0.25 is 15 minutes 47.25 drive time you're gonna to have to take four 10 hour breaks the total time is going to be 87.25 hours so it just kind of lets you know it gives you a guide so you can determine how long it's going to take you to uh, to go someplace all right, and uh, let me see. I did have um, so the other thing I want to tell you is team driving. All right, so if you're considering driving for a team, that's my that's my cheat sheet. You don't need that. So if you're considering driving for a team or driving as a team, I think I said this before in another video. It's going to be important. It's really important to understand what you're getting into. All right, now I don't mean that in a bad way, but team driving is not for everybody. All right, you're, you're two people in a truck that have to share a confined space for an extended amount of time. So you want to make sure that one, you get along with that person. Two, you're on the same page. Um, a lot of different, you know, different things you want to uh, be careful of. One person might smoke, the other person might not smoke. One person might uh, like to eat at the uh, you know, eat out. One person might like to go to the truck stop all the time. One person might like to take frequent stops. The other person might like to just run as hard as they can. All these are things that you want to talk about before you get in the truck and say, I'm going to team drive with somebody. All right. You got to do it. You can't just do team driving. All right. Um, 
when you do your paperwork, going back to the paperwork for a second, when you do your paperwork, make sure that it's neat, make sure that it's clean, make sure that it's, it's, it's legible, you can read it, make sure that uh, you don't have any mistakes on it because this is your money. This is why you're out here. You're out here to get paid. And if you're not getting your paperwork done right, or if they can't read it, or if they have to send it back to you for corrections, and then you make corrections, and now now that they receive it, it's past the cutoff, well, you're not going to be paid that week. It's going to be another week. I hit the button. All right? So you got to be careful to um, make sure your paperwork is right all the time, okay? That's critical. And um, most importantly, be safe when you're out here. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. All right? Like, subscribe. Make that be live for the state live. But be safe and smart about it. Arrive alive. All right? Appreciate you. It's Mad Dog coming at you one more time.